hi all welcome back to my channel by spark pearl so in this video i'm going to discuss some of the theoretical questions that are asked to data engineers it was some of the questions that was asked to data engineers according to spark in kpmg so these are the some of the questions which i picked through linkedin and google so let's start so this is one of the uh, basic question that you know data engineers uh, ask like if they are a fresher or like having experience of about you know one to two years so this kind of question they can expect like uh, which is one is better to use hadoop or spark right so obviously we all know spark is better to use but on the basis of some aspects let us discuss like processing speed so hadoop is slower because it is based on disk based processing and spark is faster because it is in memory computing right then data processing it is made map reduce paradigm it suppose uh, paradigm like map reduce equal ml and you know, other things also like rdd data frames and etc ease of use spark is relatively easier than fault tolerance high fault tolerance like both are having good fault tolerance capabilities then real time processing in hadoop it is not possible when but in spark it has you know good real time processing capabilities using spark structured streaming then the language support uh, like hadoop is you know a little bit tough you know write codes in hadoop and right because it primarily supports java and it, it it can be supported using hadoop streaming but spark gives you multiple multiple languages support such as java scala python then r also an ecosystem uh, it has already you know matured like there are many tools and many technologies that needs to be learned you know to be compatible with hadoop but the spark is it still in growing and there are diverse tools and libraries which are you know already in built in spark and we can as it is compatible with python you can use python with spark that is by spark so a lot of things can be you know enhanced then let us understand the difference between this transformation and spark action so already have created one video on it but let us discuss some of the aspects here also the transformation it produces a new rdd so every transformation creates a new rdd this is the one of the main thing you know of transformation then action it computes and produces results okay then laziness transformations are lazy and actions are uh, quicker eager right then some of the examples map filter flat map then here's spark action it could be collect count first take save as text file anything then execution does not execute immediately forms a dag so transformation basically forms a dag right and actions uh, they executes immediately then optimization there can be optimization techniques which can be applied to transformation such as you know filtering out the result then some join optimization can be done but in case of action no optimization can be done it is directly triggering right then return value it returns an error rdd and returns a non rdd value such as integer array or any result right you know which we compute then usage it is used to build a direct computation graph you should trigger computation and retrieve results so this is some of the basic difference that we can see and it can be you know it is a good question that can be asked in several interviews like theoretical questions while you are uh, solving some question uh, an interview can trigger this right let us so this is this can be asked to one of the you know who is giving your uh, interview for the aws data engineer like what is the difference between PySpark, databricks and amazon emr right then the platform uh by spark is based on you know open source apache spark library for python programming then databricks is unified electro uh, unified panel platform which is built on top of the apache spark then amazon emr is a big data platform based on apache spark hadoop and spark and multiple other technologies you know which is like which support distributed computing and distributed storage and all so emr can be incorporated with that and deployment can be deployed to any compatible cluster or cloud provider it can be deployed then databricks it is fully managed service on the cloud then amazon emr it is also you know managed service by aws then ease of use you know, all three are easy to use right it depends on how we are setting up it up then integration well, like everything is uh, integrated compatibly like uh, when we install you know pi spark in our local system like mostly if you are you know not using any uh, ID then it can be tough we need to go with command line but database provide good environment you know notebook environment type of so we can use that and also EMR can be also you know we can uh, use some of the notebooks which are already uh, such as zipline we can use so 
it is good then collaboration can be used for collaborative development python libraries or uh, databricks offers good collaboration features right we can add a team with another developer with another test anything databricks is good at very good at it and it is continuously you know, developing on that side then amazon emr it also uh, supports collaboration through you know emr notebooks and then scalability all three can be scalable like according to our you know cluster configuration our requirement anything this this can be scalable right then cost uh, by spark can be a little lower and databricks it features various like according to the computation engine that we use everything same emr can be you know a little cheaper than databricks then manage services uh, if we are installing it locally then we need to manage it our own right databricks offers and both amazon and databricks offers uh, manage services and support all three have good community support basically uh, most of the questions that we are having you know will be on the base of a spark that we that we can find anywhere then databricks it is also good community support we can uh, get support from them then amazon also had you know good support documentation and all everything so use case we can see suitable for projects where fine tune control is required on infrastructure side right we want to manage infrastructure so that you know data and all everything resides within our organization then suitable for projects requiring fast development deployment and collaboration databricks is very good in that then suitable for projects with heavy reliance on aws service and integration since emr is an amazon service only so suppose if our data is coming through s3 or any other aws services and our target may be redshift database which is also you know a redshift data warehouse so this can be very good option if our most of the you know components of our architecture resides in amazon ecosystem so it is very good then what are rdd and data frame this is one of the basic questions that is asked so rdd is a resilient distributed data set is a core abstraction in spark representing an immutable so they both are immutable data frames and rdd because data frames are built on top of rdd okay some of the it is a low level api this one one key point that you can mention then data frame is a higher level abstraction built on top of rdd it is introduced after 1.3 spark version then data frames are you know easily to use and you know easy to understand we can visualize data frame very you know because if you have worked in excel we have worked in rdbms table so data frames is we can consider that as similar to that right like more structured way of working and what is spark partition like if you are working on a spark also like if you are asked to define what is spark partition many of the many of us cannot define it so let us just un understand this like spark partition logical division of data in a form of rdd or data frame whatever we can say right uh, like it, in small units the small chunks of file are divided you know and stored uh, separately or uh, computed separately in different uh, worker nodes so this is like a spark partition the number of partition in rdd or data frame determines the degree of parallelism like how many partition will be there that much amount of parallelism will be getting so the partition or the parallelism we can spark defines automatically or like we can also manually configure that okay that is also me but you can explicitly control the partitioning of data okay then what is shuffling in spikes so shuffling is like basically redistributing the data across that network right uh, like suppose one chunk of data resides in worker node one and some of the data resides in worker node two three and four and we are shuffling or we are repartitioning then you know, it might be like some part of the data which is in worker node one may go to worker node three or worker node four like and vice versa can happen right so minimizing shuffling is crucial for optimizing the performance for spark jobs because lower the shuffling lower the compute power and lower the time it will take so this should be our main motto whenever we are trying to optimize the code so we should understand shuffling first so like uh, uh, any white transformation result in shuffling such as join or group by when we are aggregating and also it involves shuffle between nodes and this is a, a costly operation so we should always try to minimize shuffling in uh, spark or any computed frame or any you know, distributed framework so like this is a good question what is the difference between narrow and wide transformation uh, this question you can uh, you know expect then i think this question uh, video have also created so you can go through that and i think this is the repeated question no issues then what is dag like dag is you know uh, directed acyclic graph which uh, uh, 
in vertices and edges it consists of them and edges represent the operation to be applied on rdd right in spark drag every edge directs from an earlier or later in the sequence like it is it is it will be in a sequence like it cannot happen like a points to b b point to c and c points to a it, it cannot happen like that it should be in one direction only right that's why it is acyclic then the scheduler splits the spark rdd into stages based on various transformation and applied so whether it be narrow or wide the scheduler decides and you know according to the function that we have used it splits the task according to accordingly i have given one example of this tag right so it is stage 11 and stage 12 so between stage 11 and stage 12 there is a y transformation which results in exchange this exchange represents the shuffling of the data right and this is this is a single partition because there are no uh, y transformation used then let us this is a good question how to handle data skewness one practical will be also doing in this but let's you know understand the theory behind it data skewness is like suppose we are having uh, uh, like consider we are having you know uh, we'll just write it also so like consider we are having uh, some data okay I will just change out one more slide. So we are having some customer data or customer order status. Okay. Order status field. Which have like some parameters such as, you know, we can say it has like uh, completed or in progress. Completed in progress. Failed or anything like uh, uh, to be continued or uh, no status so suppose these five status are there you know whenever we are uh, creating a customer table and whenever we are nesting a data into the you know, spark environment so suppose like uh, this completed is having like one lakh values right for this one lakh records are there then in progress is like having you know, some 5000 and similar 500 field is having like around 200 then to be continued is like you know some 500 and 400 and no status like having 100 records or something like that so this can be this can this can represent a skewed data because why because this completed value is having a lot of data so obviously the partition which are having this in progress fail to be continued or no status will be doing a very little task right and while the partition which uh, comprises of completed maybe it is divided into two or three partition according to spark but it will result into data skew because uh, it is having so many records compared to another value right so it will res resulting in data skew so here are some of the uh, you know, techniques that is mentioned here like uh, partitioning can be done right where you can repartition the data and so can be it can be evenly distributed but it cannot you know uh, totally it cannot you know re remove skewiness the best method is salting like any random or sequential numbers to be skewed keys to distribute them more evenly across partitions suppose like this is like uh, no i said completed so completed underscore one can be then completed underscore two computed underscore three so this can be you know some uh, things can be added salting can be done right then then aggregation can be done aggregation strategies like different you know aggregation uh, strategies we can use like according to the data whatever we are having then broadcasting small tables like for example if you're performing joins with you know this data so to avoid shuffling and with the data is q data so broadcasting small tables can be a good you know strategy and data replication replicate a small skewed partition across multiple nodes to improve parallelism and reduce process time with skewed partition this can also be done then this is like uh, a typical question explain challenging situation in you face in your project so they can be you know multiple challenging situation that the data engineer faces in a project so for example the pipes pipeline broke down uh, the data is not uh, coming in proper time right then then how you are uh, click how you are uh, overcoming that situation so there can be some requirement from the client side like uh, uh, the data which you know you have insert, inserted in the past two months or like 
uh, current month is april and the data which uh, you have inserted in the january month was wrong data or some you new know, something uh, data mismatch or anything can be error from the client side is there so how you will handle that situation then some situation can be like the you know some partitions are taking a lot of time how you, how you are handling that how you are optimizing the code so all this depends on your project so this is a very good thing like uh, this should, should you should be knowing about your project you should analyze it and then only you can you know do the work so this depends on your project and your working scenarios if you are comfortable with it uh, uh, do let me know otherwise uh, just uh, you know you can uh, comment in your uh, whatever challenges you face if you don't know the solution please comment in this video we will be discussing and you can dm me in my linkedin or anything we can discuss it so thank you please subscribe my channel and yeah have a good day bye